Ah, hello, and welcome to Mathematics Marsh. Today, you're going to meet two intrepid explorers, a second grader named Sam. Hi, everybody! And a third grader named Sal. Hey, everybody! Uh, they're from the school where Ms. Zabornak teaches second grade. Sam's in Ms. Zabornak's class this year, and Sal was last year. You might hear them talk about their favorite teacher during their uh, trip through Mathematics Marsh. They flew in last night on this airplane and have camped out. We're going to join them as they start their adventure this morning. Good morning, Sam and Sal. It looks like you guys are starting today with a game of fill the stairs before heading out from your campsite through the marsh. Can we play with you? Yeah, sure you can, guys. Oh, yeah, come on in. Watch us play. Okay, thank you. Sam, could you tell me some of the rules of fill the stairs? Oh, I would love to tell you the rules. What you'll need first is a set of stairs. I think you guys can see it on your screen there. You'll have zero at the bottom and 100 at the top. Okay. Now, you're going to take turns either rolling a dice or printing out or, or cards. Sal and I are going to use these 10-sided dice today, one for the tens place and one for the ones place. All right, we're each going to roll it to make a two-digit number and write it on one of our stairs. But here's the thing. Every number must increase as it goes up the stairs. So if the number is higher on the stair, it needs to be bigger or larger than the number below it. For example, 20 must be higher than the number 19 if both are on the staircase. Additionally, every number must be smaller than the number below it. So if 20 is up here, every number below 20 should be smaller than 20. And every number above it should be higher. This will become clear as you watch us play. Lastly, if you get a number that doesn't fit anywhere on the stairs because all the stairs are taken up, you have to write it under your stair. Once again, I think when we play, this will make more sense. The game is over when somebody fills in all of their stairs. In order to play, you might need a pencil, a paper, and some staircase, and either a zero to nine dice like this one, uh, you can get a roll dice, Google roll dice, and find one on the internet to roll a virtual die. Or you can make cutout dice, or use the cards from the Seattle Public Schools math packet that came out this week. All right, are you ready to play, Sal? I sure am, Sam. Let's go. Why don't you go first? Oh. All right, Sal, thanks for letting me go first. Here's my stairs on the left, and I see your stairs over there on the right. Okie doke, I'm going to roll my die. If you only have one die, you can roll twice, first for tens and second for ones. I'm going to roll, oh, and I got three tens, three tens, and one one, one one for the number 31. Let me think. Well, it needs to go between zero and 100. 30's kind of in the middle. It's not super close to 100, but it's not really close to zero either. I need to leave lots of room on either side. I'll put it kind of in the middle. Good choice, Sam. Good play. Okay, my turn. All right. Sal's going to roll. roll. Oh, I got six tens and seven ones. Hmm, that number's pretty close to 100. I'm going to put it close to the top, but there's still some numbers, 70s and 80s and 90s, that could go between. Hmm, I'll put it here with a couple of spaces left. Oh, wow. Good play, Sal. Okay, my turn. Mm, I also got six tens and eight ones. I'll also do something like you. I'll only leave one space, though. Mm, okay, okay, my turn. Oh, one ten and four ones. Hmm, that's pretty small. It's pretty close to zero, but I want to leave some extra space. So I'm going to put it... Yeah, I'll leave a couple spots below. Mm, okay, Sal. Okay, my turn. Well, seven tens and one one. Seventy-one. Seventy-one. Well, that's bigger than sixty-eight. I only have one stair I can put it on. 71. Oh, man. Okay, I hope I don't roll any more big numbers. I don't have space. So, oh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm going to roll again. I got 110 again. This time I got 11. 11. 110 and 11. Hmm, that's smaller than 14. 
but it's pretty close. I'm going to leave some more space between 14 or between 11 and zero. I'll put it right there. Oh, good choice. All right, let's keep playing, Sam. All right. Oh, man, I just rolled nine tens and three ones. I don't have any stairs that I can go on. 93 is smaller or is bigger than 68. It can't go on that stair. I'll put it under my stairs. Oh, that's okay, Sam. All right, my turn. I rolled eight tens and seven ones. Hmm. Well, eight tens and seven ones. I just saw what happened to, to Sam. I think I'll... I'll leave some more space just in case I get something in the 90s. But there it goes. Oh, good play, Sal. That makes sense. Okay, my turn. Four tens and nine ones. Well, four tens is pretty close to three. Uh, yeah, pretty close to three tens. I'll put that right there above 31. Oh, good choice. Good choice. Okay, Sal's turn. Hmm, all right, let's keep playing. Okay, I got 50. Exactly 50. Okay, I'll put that there. Um, okay, my turn. My turn. I got 12, Sam. I, I'm going to roll a 12. I'll put that down here near the bottom. Your turn, Sal. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. 58. 58. Let's see. I have 50 and then 67. It's bigger than 50, but smaller than 60. Darn, I can't play 58. That's okay, Sal. I also have some numbers under my stairs. Hmm. Next up is... Oh, five tens and seven ones. That fits perfectly between 49 and 68. Oh, great play, Sam. Great play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go. Oh, 45. Perfect. I got a great spot for that. Oh, man. 62. That doesn't fit anywhere. I don't have any space up there. Oh. Whoa, 29. I'll tuck that right there in between. Perfect. My stairs are getting full. Great work, Sal. You're beating me. Okay, my turn. Ah, oh, 20. Oh, we're getting close, too. Oh, 91. Perfect. I'm so glad I have a top stair for 91. Oh, 86. Oh, man, that doesn't play. Oh, darn. 23. That doesn't work either. Oh, four. Perfect. My last stair. Only one to go. Me too. One to go. One to go. I need something smaller than 11. Oh, two tens and one one. Oh, man. Hmm, Sam. It's thinking. Ah. Oh. What numbers would work for me? I need something between 12 and 20. Hmm. I know. The number... Hmm. Well, let's roll and see what I get. Ah, oh, two tens and three ones. 23. Does that fit? No. Your turn, Sal. Oh, I rolled zero tens and eight ones for the number eight. My stairs are full. Hooray! Oh, congratulations, Sal. What a great game. All right, thank you, Sam. You're, you're an excellent opponent. You made some really smart plays, too. I'm sure tonight when we play at the end of our trek, you'll have better luck. All right, thanks for playing. Should we head out on our adventure? Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Let's head through this marsh and see what's, what's in store. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Sal, is that is that a parrot? Why, I, I think it is, Sam. I... I didn't know parrots lived in marshes. I thought they were more like rainforest animals. Eh, don't question these things, Sal. All right. Well, hmm. Wait. Squawk! 78 plus 36 equals 100 plus 14 equals 114. Squawk! 78 plus 36 equals 100 plus 14 equals 114. Did you hear that, Sam? I did, Sal. What is that parrot saying? Well, he said something like 78 plus 36 is equal to 100 plus 14, which is equal to 114. Does that make any sense to you, Sam? Hmm. Let me think about this. Is this parrot telling us the truth? I want to think back to Mrs. Bornack's class. She told us when we're doing mental math, oh, sometimes when we do mental math, we want to break things into tens and ones. Well, I know that 78 plus 36. Hmm. 78 could be 70 and 8. 70, 7 tens, and 8. 8 ones make 78. Oh, plus, plus 36. Plus 3 tens is 30, and 6 ones is 6. Oh, okay. 
Well, now let's see. Where did he get 100 plus 14? I know I like to add my tens together first. So 70 and 30. Huh, hey, that makes 100. I know that. Not math facts. 7 tens and 3 tens is 10 tens, or 100. And then, oh yeah, 8 plus 6. That's a snap fact. I know that one. 8 plus 6 is 14. And why, I guess, yeah, if you did 100 plus 14, it would equal 114. Oh, wow, Sam, that was really great. I also remember Ms. Zabornak teaching me that last year in, in second grade. Thanks for sharing your second grade mental math skills. It's making my head spin. All right, shall we keep on moving through the uh, marsh cell? Why, why, yes, I think we should. I wonder what will come next. Hey Sam, what do you, what do you, or hey Sal, what do you see on the ground up there? Hmm, I see, I see three bottles, but I don't know what's inside of them. Hmm, here's a note. This note says, this magical potion will be needed to get through the rest of the marsh. Make sure you take enough. One bottle. Hmm. Well, we're gonna have to figure out which bottle to take. We're going to pick our potion this bottle says it's half full and this bottle says it's one third full and this bottle says it's one fourth full but we need to take the bottle sam we need to take the bottle with the most potion so we make sure we get through the marsh Gee, sam i think you're right should we take the one that's one half full the bottle that's one third full or the bottle that's one fourth full Oh, oh, I know, Sam. Or I know, Sal. I know, Sal. Let's take the bottle that's one-fourth full. I know because four is bigger than two. So that should have more in it if it's four is bigger than two. Hmm. Sam, I hear what you're saying. But you know, I remember something about fractions. Something that sometimes the smaller number is the bigger part of the whole. I'm going to draw here in the dirt. I'm going to draw three rectangles and I'm going to try and see if I can look at it that way. I'm going to draw one where I have a rectangle and I, I make it one half full. Now I'm going to make the same size rectangle next to it but only fill up one third. And now I'm going to make another rectangle next to that and, and this is going to be the same size as the other two but it's only going to be filled with one fourth. And when I look at that, I remember, oh, that's right, I remember. One half means there are two parts of the whole. And since there are only two parts, each part is bigger than if there are three parts or four parts. So yeah, one half is bigger than one third, which is bigger than one fourth. Because again, one half takes the same size whole and splits it into two pieces. And each piece is bigger than if you split that same thing into three pieces or four pieces. Oh, that makes sense, Sal. So with that in mind, Sam, I, I think we should take the bottle that is one half full. It has the biggest part of the hole left inside of it. That will help us get through this mathematics marsh. Oh, I'm so glad you're here with me, Sal. You really helped me reason through what fraction was bigger just by thinking about the denominator and which is the bigger part of the whole. Thank you, Sal. All right, let's move on. Whew, I'm getting tired. Oh, I'm real tired. I'm real tired, Sal. Me too, Sam. I wonder, are we there yet? What do you see over there? Oh, what's that piece of paper sticking out of that tree? Oh, I think it's a map. Let's go get the map. Oh, let's look at this map. Hmm. This map says we've come 39 meters, but the whole marsh is 84 meters long. How much farther do we have to go, Sal? Wait, let me think about this, Sam. What did you just tell me? Um, we've, you said that the marsh is 84 meters. That's the whole path is 84 meters. Yeah, that's right. But the part that we've already walked is 39. 
we need to figure out how much more we have to go. Hmm. Hey, Sal, or hey, Sam, I remember when I was in Mrs. Bornak's class, she used to have us use open number lines. Oh, I agree. I think that would help because it's kind of like the problem. 39 meters is how far we've gone. And then we need to add some more meters to get to the total of 84. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll use a number line. Here, I'll draw it in the dirt. Here, I'll put arrows on either side because I know numbers go forever in all directions or in both directions. Then I'll start it at 39 because that's where we are. That's how far we've already come. And I'll end it at 84 and I'll see how much space is in between. Well, that's such a good plan, Sam. How are you going to figure that out? I think I'm going to draw hops on my number line. My first hop is going to get me to a friendly number. I'll go from 39 to 40. That's just one hop. Then once I'm at 40, I can make hops of 10 from 40 to 50, 10 more from 50 to 60, 10 more to 70, and 10 more from 70 to 80. Oh, great plan, Sam, great plan. Now you just have four more hops to go to get to 84. That's right, Sal, that's right. Just like Mrs. Bornack taught us. All right, now we're at 84, but wait, Hold on, Sam, Sam, Sal, where is the number for how far we have left to go? Well, Sa well, Sam, I, I think we just count the hops. Oh, yeah. 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 makes 40. And 4 plus 1 is 5. And 40 plus 5 is 45. We have to go 45 more meters, Sal. Thanks for helping me figure that out. No problem, Sam, anytime. All right, well, I hope we don't run into anything scary out there. Me too, me too. <laughs> What's that? It's a snake! Oh, don't worry, Sam, that snake's not so big. Wait, is it getting bigger? Hold on, let me measure it. Yeah, see, Sam, that snake is just one and one quarter foot long. Huh. Oh, whew, that's not big. Wait, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sal, it's getting bigger. Measure it again. Oh my goodness, now it's one and three quarter feet long. It grew. Oh, oh no, Sam, Sal, Sal, it's, it's growing again. Oh goodness, oh goodness, oh goodness. Okay, okay, I'll measure, I'll measure. Now it's two and a quarter feet long. Two and one fourth feet long. Two and one quarter or two and one fourth feet long. Oh, goodness. Wait, wait. I think it's going to grow again. Now how long is this snake going to be? Well, Sam, I actually think I noticed a pattern. Every time we've measured the snake, it's grown by one half of a foot. At first, it was one and one quarter foot, and it grew by two quarters or one half. So if it grows two quarters again, it'll grow from two and one quarter to two and three quarters. Let's measure it and see if that's right. There it is, two and three quarters. Whoa, that's a crazy snake we've met, Sal. Yeah, but he seems pretty friendly. Maybe he'll come for us, come with us on the rest of our journey through Mathematics Marsh. Oh, whew, I see here on my map, it looks like we've passed the tougher questions. If we're gonna take this snake with us though, I only have so much storage, I'm wondering, Will this snake ever grow to be 10 feet long exactly? Hmm, I don't know, Sam. Maybe some of the viewers out there can help us with that question. And that wraps up this episode of Mathematics March. Thanks for watching. You can practice the math skills explored in this video and more in this week's uh, math packet for second and third graders from SPS. Stay safe, stay sane, wash your hands.